same one. <laughs> well, good evening. Hello, everyone. Blessings in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, welcome to another uh, hour of power, uh, night of prayer with the Zion Worship Center and located in the city of Moreno Valley on the corner of Indian and Eucalyptus. My name is Alan. And I'm Lilia. And we want to welcome you to uh, this evening's prayer service. So as you are joining, God bless you, Sylvia Mercado. Thank yes, you for hello, Sylvia. connecting you for with watching. us. Thank you for joining us. If you have a prayer request or a praise report, please include it in the group chat. And we will recognize it when we get to that part of our service. Um, we hope that your week, as we always say, is going as off to a good start. Mm -hmm. uh, we had an incredible service on Sunday, uh, Sunday morning worship. I hope you enjoyed yours as well. Uh, really spoke to me. Uh, uh, Pastor Will Harper really spoke to me in his uh, message on Sunday all about... Uh, your relationship with God and with other people, how, how how important it is that you really know God and develop that relationship with Him, and 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 are operating in His will and not pursuing your own. Hey, God bless you, Alan and Hello, Maria. Alan and Maria. God bless you, our sis, brother and sister from Indiana. I hope all is going well yes. with the two of you. So, uh, <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you. So as we were saying, we hope your week is going exceptionally well so far. Um, I know this weather is just really crazy. It has you coming and going. One day it's hot, the next mm -hmm. day it's not. The grass starts turning green because it's nine. One day it was 93 degrees. Here in Oklahoma? Mm hmm. And um, then the next day it was like 40 something. Yeah, the next day it was like 40, 41 degrees. And yeah, it's just, it's crazy. You don't know if you're gonna wear board shorts or you have to put on your parka. You don't know what's going on. <laughs> so, um, you going swimming or you going skiing? You know, it just they can't make up its mind. Mm. One day you got flies, and next day you have nothing. Yes. You know, so it's crazy it, weather. It's for crazy. Sure. So, um, well, especially here in uh, Oklahoma, you know where. We've been gone 24 years, and we kind of forgot what the weather is like over here. And um, it's already April, and I'm asking my friends, well, is this normal? Because it gets really, it's getting really, it's been getting really chilly lately. I mean, really chilly to the point to where we want to turn the heat on. But we'd rather um, hide under the covers. But, you know, the, the weather has been a little, a little bit crazy. You think because it's springtime, it's a lot warmer. And it's not over here, so. But I'm sure it'll get here, huh? Yeah. And then we'll want, want a little bit of coolness. I'm ready for the warmer weather. I'm ready for the to be able to sit outside and enjoy yeah, the me too. the cool breeze, the sun, the sun. You know, and the birds. I don't, I don't really need all the humidity, but uh, you got. You gotta take what you can get and um you know and that's what i enjoy about um oklahoma is that you have four definite seasons you know and you can enjoy the variety of of god's creation and and, and some parts of the planet you can't do that but here you can and you can appreciate all of it you know including tornadoes yeah tornadoes thunderstorms lightning wind definitely a lot of wind so mm -hmm. 
Um, God bless you, wow. Veronica Castellanos. She said, um, bendiciones desde Mexicali. Oh, wow. Mm. Mm. Que bueno, tardes. bienvenida, hermana. Bienvenida desde Mexicali. Mm -hmm. You got a watch party there or are you by yourself? <laughs> I know, huh? Estás solita o tiene más gente con usted, Veronica? Yeah, so. Yeah. So, um, as I said earlier, because I know more people are coming in, if you do have a prayer request or praise report, uh, go ahead and include it in the chat. Um, just to give you an update in regards to my family, my brother's continuing to show improvement. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much you, uh, you guys know that a couple of weeks ago he passed away was considered, was pronounced brain dead uh, for two and a half days, but he came back, God restored mm -hmm. him, and he's showing signs of improvement. Um, however, my mom uh, is now in the hospital. Um, she had trouble breathing. She had a, was complaining of a sore throat. Um, they found a mass uh, behind her tonsils. She had to be rushed to the hospital by a paramedic. Uh, she's currently in ICU. She's stable. She's on a ventilator. Uh, but we're believing that she's coming off of it because she's breathing 100% on her own. They've reduced the blood pressure medication. And she's stable. So now they did a biopsy today on the mass. And we're believing that uh, no cancer, yes. no nothing. And... Uh, and that um, she'll be coming out of the hospital. That's mm -hmm. what we're believing for. Yeah. Healed. Isn't the doctor say that he didn't think it was? Yeah, the doctor said he didn't think it was cancer. Yeah. He didn't think he didn't believe, he didn't believe it was cancer, but he's gonna uh, double wait, check. double check to make sure there's there's no yeah. none of that there. You know, their concern is my mom has been through nine surgeries over the past two years, and you know she you know how much can you take? You know, mm -hmm. and that's what they're concerned. And she's 88 years old, mm -hmm. you know, so they don't want to put her through anything that she doesn't have to go through. So, mm -hmm. um, that's what's going on. And, and, um, another friend of ours out here, uh, he went in for a biopsy in his eye and, uh, they did find cancer there. And then another one of our friends, wife. Annette. Annette. Yeah. Uh, they found out she had cancer. And then another one of our friends, his name is Curtis, found out that he mm. has cancer. So there's a lot of stuff going on around us, mm -hmm. you know. And we need to be, like the Bible says, to keep our lamps trimmed and burning bright. We, gotta be, we have to be ready and be discerning about our surroundings and be in position to um, comfort those who need comfort and to pray for those who, who need healing and uh, peace you know and that's why I said I don't I don't remember if I talked about this last week, but I shared it with my sister today, and it's not really what I'm going to talk about, but I'm, I'm going to share it with you anyway. I'm reading this book called How to Worship the King. And it's, if, you, if you haven't read it, it's just an, an incredible, incredible book about worship. And at the core of worship is relationship. relationship the relationship between you and the Father. And he talks about in this one passage, uh, because he, he discusses the significance of worship, corporate worship, uh, individual worship, and, and it, it's his contention, his belief, that the church has kind of gotten off track with the principle, philosophy, and purpose of worship. He believes that we worship 
for the crowd or we worship for each other as a, you know, and I'm going to use this word loosely, but as a form of entertainment, you know, but worship isn't for people. Worship is for God. And when we get back to that, he believes that it will change for the individual and it'll change for the corporate body of church. But he says this, that many believers say they want to be used by God. Right? We, we, we all, we've all said it. I've said it. Mm -hmm. I want to be used by God for his kingdom. Right? But what we need to be saying, what we should be saying, is that we want to know God. And he gives examples in, in the book how God used Pharaoh, how God used uh, Nebuchadnezzar. He used them to, to continue his plan and purpose for his people Israel. But God, but Moses knew God. Daniel knew knew God. David knew God. And in knowing God and in developing that relationship, just giving you an example here, David had the ability because of his connection and his relationship with God to overcome Goliath. The three Hebrew boys knew that you can throw us in the fiery furnace and whether we live or we die, we're going to still worship God. Worship God. They had a relationship with God and they were able to overcome. Daniel, thrown in the lion's den because he knew God. So his contention is it is more significant and more important that we know God than say we want to be used by God. I hope that makes sense to you. I hope it makes sense to you. And, and, and we, how do we know God? How do we get to know God? We got to dig in his word and find out who he is, what he means to us. Have that prayer time and meditation time. And when we do that, we're operating inside of his plan and his will for us. And we can actually hear what God is trying to tell us. And I, as I get older... <laughs> I'm beginning to understand mm. how how important that really is that we know God, you know, and that is and that is a very important word. I want you guys to to per, to look it up. What that word "know" means? K N O W. I don't know how you say that in Spanish. Um, saber. Saber. To know is to, yeah, saber. Right. Uh -huh. saber. It's a very intimate, deep meaning. Look it up in the Hebrew. I believe it's kenosis. And, it, and, it, and it's a very intimate, deep connection, you know. And, and that's the kind of connection and relationship we need to have. With God. Sounds yeah. like you're teaching already. Yeah. This may be the one. Personally. So, um, and uh, that's 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 the uh, import, the uh, be kind of the beginning of the the book Worship a King, um, and he uses several several um, illustrations from from the Bible, but. The one I always remember is what Paul said. And he said that I may know him and in the power of his resurrection and sharing in his sufferings that I might become like him in his death. That's a very deep... I mean, Paul's trying to convey the message how much he wants to have a relationship with Christ. There's a hunger and thirst in what he's writing that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. You know? Mm -hmm. And that's what we should do. We should pursue that. 
in the same way God pursues us. Pursue him, you know? Sometimes we, we spend too much time and energy pursuing other things instead of pursuing God. And in our pursuing other things, we, we, we break relationship. You know, does not the Bible say that seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you? Matthew 6 and 33. Our priorities are sometimes to get messed up. And we all want answers from God. But if you don't have a relationship with God, how can you hear him? We come here with our requests and we bring them to the throne of God that we might find grace and mercy. But if we haven't pursued God and, and, and have an established relationship or uh, building a relationship with him, how can we expect anything? You know? I think that's the beauty about uh, becoming born again. When you become born again, at least it happened to me. Oh, but like, like the Bible says, you know, the veil of darkness is lifted from your eyes. And that I remember when I became born again, I could read the word before mm -hmm. I couldn't. And um, I started reading the word and I started developing a relationship with God. And I think that that's, the beautiful part about who we worship, God the Creator, our Heavenly Father, Jesus our Lord, whereas in other religions, they don't have that relationship with their God. It's mostly a works thing. And it's not like us, you know, how we have, <laughs> we have that wonderful, wonderful relationship with God and it's an intimate relationship that we have with Him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that's really neat. So I think it's important also, I believe that if a person is not born again, that they haven't accepted Jesus. I mean, you can have people that go to church on Sunday just because it's Sunday and they go to church. You know, you can have people go to church on Wednesday and still not be born again. And they don't have that relationship with God and they're not growing in you know, that could be one of the reasons because they're not born again. Mm -hmm. So I always think about that, the importance of being born again. Mm -hmm. It's crucial. But to those of us that are, and God is speaking to you, he's speaking to you for a reason, for those people that may be in your church or in your neighborhood who aren't born again, like my wife said, but who, how can they know unless they're taught, unless we, we share, you know, they have to be led mm -hmm. to the throne. And that's our responsibility as a believer, you know, and, and the only way we can do that is if we continue to grow deeper in the Lord and then the Lord can speak to you and he'll direct you to those people that need to hear the word. You know, it was kind of lead me into what I, I did want to share with you. And I just want to, I'm giving you an example again of, of exactly what we're talking about right here, right now. Um, what does it mean for God's goodness and mercy to follow you? The answer probably is better than you have, have imagined. The Hebrew word is translated as follow, is radafa, which means pursue. Do you know God pursues you? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Follow. You can just say, surely goodness and mercy shall pursue me all the days of my life. Jesus made it clear in the three lost parables. This is what my wife and I were talking about the lost sheep, the lost coin and the lost prodigal son. First, Jesus explained that if anyone had 100 sheep, but lost one, 
he would leave the 99 and pursue the one that is lost. Jesus described a woman with 10 silver coins who loses one and searches diligently until she finds it. Jesus likened finding the lost sheep, the lost coin, to a sinner, sinner repenting. Jesus saved the best and most shocking story for last. The younger of the two sons essentially tells his father, I wish you were dead so I can have my inheritance. So the father gives the son what he wants and the son proceeds to squander it all on, in a foreign land. Completely destitute, the son decides to beg his father to take him back as a servant. Here's the best part right here. A good Jewish father had every right to refuse the son's request, but the father in Jesus' story does the unthinkable. Every day he scans the horizon for his son and spots. And when he spots him, the father debases himself, which means he just left everything else, runs to the son, and embraces him. When the son repents, the father accepts him not as a servant, but as his son. Doesn't, God doesn't want, God doesn't wait for us to get our act together. He doesn't make us jump through hoops before we can get a bit of his goodness and mercy. He pursues us. And when we repent, he and the angels rejoice in heaven. God pursues us. And if we have that relationship with God and we know that he does it on our behalf, that should encourage us or drive us to share that with other people. You know, we know God. We already have the relationship with God because we're already saved. We're already saved. We're already full of the Holy Spirit. We're praying and we're believing day by day. Are we going to have problems too? Yes. But because we know when we, when we come, when we fall into problems, temptations, or whatever, we have, a, we have a refuge. We have a hiding place in God. But those who don't know, who are, aren't born again, who still may be coming to church because grandma's dragging them, kicking and screaming, or... They're there because of a tradition. We need to share the word with them, the love of Jesus with them. Because God will give us that discerning spirit and say, hey, you know that person, that person over there or whoever it is, that's, that's where we come in, you know. So anyway, God pursues us because he loves us. Even when we mess up, even when we completely destroy everything and we feel like we're so undeserving of his forgiveness because he's forgiven us a million times. Well, you know what? That's why Jesus went to the cross. Past, present, future. Your sins are forgiven. That's the devil lying to you. He's like, oh, you messed up. You know, God doesn't love you anymore. God never stops loving you. Ever. So, um, he pursues us. And, and in that pursuit, we need to turn to him and receive what he has for us. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> I was going to let you know that Veronica said that she's watching this with her sister and her son. Awesome. So, welcome sister and son and welcome Taibe Guanal and Gloria Munoz and Gloria Munoz welcome so we you know we just been talking about knowing God and getting in his presence and worship uh, worship belongs to God not to people we are to worship him you know I've been uh, I have been um assisting in background vocals at the church we've been attending out here. And I have to tell you, it's Lord Jesus is more than a notion because I love worship music. I love gospel. I love contemporary Christian music. Kirk Franklin, DC Talk, J. 
Jericho. I, I can go on and on. I love the sing. But they use these inner ear things, you know, and you hear the your your monitor feedback, you hear the the uh, track and you hear the worship minister talking to you and all these things are going on and you got to sing too. You know, sometimes I kind of get caught up because I'm I'm worshiping. You know, I'm singing to the Lord and I forget that I'm on stage in front of half a dozen people, you know, and it's all, you know, it's, it, it's a lot going on. And it kind of reminds me of life. And sometimes you just want to get away and worship God. And even though it may not be convenient for us, nothing is ever convenient. Uh, but we have to pursue it anyway, you know. Get away when you can. Just worship God, even if it's you. Don't don't worry about other people looking at you. You know, just worship God. Just put it all out there and see. Just see what God will do for you when you do that. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This I. There's just, you know, I was, I often, the, the, the worship minister's name, her name is Michael Ann Scobie, and I told her, wasn't this Sunday, was another Sunday then. I said, you know what, I don't know if I'm going to make it through this song. I might just be laid out here on the stage. <laughs> and she laughed. That's because, you know, some of those, you know, like uh, one of them from that Josh does at, um, uh, Zion is uh, uh what is the name of that song? He does many songs. Mm. I don't know. Uh, what is it? I can't even remember it in English. Poderoso su nombre. Uh, what a powerful name it is. Yeah, that's it. Sorry, it took me a while to remember it in English. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. They just some of those songs just take you there to that next level and you forget where you are and you know you may see me with my hands and my arms raised and my eyes closed and everyone else is sitting because I'm not even my spirit is like it's not even there because I'm like I'm reaching out and I and and I'm just reaching out for God and when we do that the blessings and the fragrant offerings begin to come down in your life because that is all God wants from us is worship. And when we understand that, the power of God can be released in your life. I hope this is a revelation to somebody. I hope somebody's really listening to what I'm saying because this was not really planned, <laughs> you know, for that, the, the, what I was going to talk about. But worship is so important. And that's what God wants from us. He wants our worship. And I believe that's what the, the essence of what Paul was trying to say in that verse, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. I'm going to look that up really quick. Because uh, I don't remember where it's found. Uh, Philippians 3.10 Philippians 3.10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. You know, that is just worship. God wants us to worship him. He's looking for, the, he's looking for those who will turn their hearts to him and worship him in spirit and in truth because he's like, it's like uh, Pastor was saying, he's just wanting to bless you. He's, he's standing there. He's wanting to bless your life, bless your family, but he's waiting for that relationship. He's waiting for that worship. We've got to worship him. Mm -hmm. So, all right. I think I'm done. I think worship is one of the ways that you develop a relationship with God. Yes. Not only reading the word, 
not only praying, but worshiping because um, suddenly you become one with God and you get into his presence and, and um, you don't want to leave. There's nothing like it here on earth. There's mm -hmm. nothing like it. And that's the beauty of it, you know, that that's that's all that God wants. And that's all he's ever wanted from the beginning is to uh, have a relationship with humankind, you know, with people. And it was it was possible during the Garden of Eden, but um, Adam and Eve sinned. So, you know, it came hard, became harder after that. But that's the reason why God sent his son Jesus mm -hmm. to become that final sacrifice so that he could once and for all have that intimate relationship with uh, the people mm -hmm. the way that he originally wanted to have. And I think that's just, just amazes me at how, you know, wonderful God is and he's just awesome. We serve an awesome God. Yes, we do. So, I hope you receive that. I really do. Um, and that's why you hear us, you know, be, unless Facebook does something dumb and t turn off the music. We don't have the rights for this music, Facebook. But, <laughs> but we just want to kind of put you, try to take you there. You know, I know I play some old-timey gospel stuff sometimes, but, you know, it just takes me there, you know. I can remember, and I promise this is this is this is it. You know, I grew up in a church where the worship was like, yeah, we come in with you know we have to dress up and this and that. We we'll always put on our Sunday dress because that's what Baptist folk do. But when it comes to worship, they worship without restraint. They may you know pick a song. And they'll they'll start singing, and then you can the Holy Spirit just just across the entire sanctuary. It's just amazing because everyone corporately is just there in the presence of God, worshiping Him through this song. It just takes us there. We're not looking at anyone else. We're just singing along and worshiping together as the body of Christ because that is what God wants from us. He doesn't care what you, what kind of clothes you have on, what kind of shoes or how big your hat is or what kind of tie you're wearing. All he wants is you and he wants to worship. He wants, he wants that worship with you, that communion with you. So, as we begin our, our, our um, time of prayer, if you do have a prayer request or praise report, I see Pastor Israel did uh, bring, um, put in the ones from the uh, official Moreno Valley uh, group page. Um, but if anyone here that is joining us here tonight, if you have a prayer request, um, Please enter it now. I guess we're going to begin um, taking our cares and concerns to the throne of God. Mm -hmm. Prayer requests uh, for Beda. Her son has asthma. Okay, so we're gonna we're going to begin with this request. So gracious God and Father, we thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to come together and worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we come lifting up Abeda's son who has who's suffering with asthma. We ask Father God that you would just uh be with this family right now in the name of Jesus. We ask, Father God, that you would uh, touch his lungs and his uh, epiglottis and, and esophageal tubes and heal him. Father, yes. uh, from the inside out, that you'd restore his breathing and his respiration to normal. 
Father God, and that, Father, that you would do it in such a way that he could only describe it as a divine healing from his creator, and that he would come to know you in a personal and intimate way, Father God, in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. so that his healing would represent a living testimony of the goodness mm -hmm. and greatness of God. Yes. Father, we ask it all in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Peggy, mm -hmm. her son is in prison that God reach him right where he is at. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we come lifting up uh, Peggy's son to you right now who, who is incarcerated, Father, and and uh, to be perfectly honest, sometimes because of our hard-headedness and our own decision-making, we can end up in a place like that. But sometimes that's where we need to be. So all of the distractions are gone. <clears throat> so, Father, I hope in this place of solitude, this prison, that a word might be spoken to this man and that he may come to know you right where he is. That the word will become alive and quickened in his spirit that he will see his salvation through Jesus Christ. Father, we ask that a mighty move, not only with him, but with others that are in that prison will come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. A chaplain might give a word. A fellow inmate who is saved might give a word to this to Peggy's son that he will know you in a close and intimate way. They might be forgiven of his sins, and that he has a find, and that he will find a new home in heaven. We thank you, Father God, in advance for this young man's salvation in yes, Jesus' Father, name. Jesus name. Send labors across his path, Father. Yes. To tell him the good news about Jesus. <clears throat> In Jesus' name, labors across his path. Yes. Because, you know, I've heard of um, a good amount of testimonies where people have gotten saved while they're in prison. Uh, they didn't know anything about Jesus. And, you know, there's a lot of people that go into those prisons and minister to these inmates. And a lot of those men end up getting saved. So, and they testify that um, those are one of the best days of their life. Yes. So I, I pray that um, this same thing goes for this, this person that we're praying for, that he will be able to accept Jesus as his Lord and Savior and have an incredible testimony later on in his life and that he will be able to share what God has done for him while he is in prison. Yes. And that the truth will set him free. Indeed. <clears throat> Whom the Son Amen. sets free is free indeed. Okay, we don't see any others. Are there any mm -hmm. others? <clears throat> Excuse me. Are there any others? Those of you who are watching, any others? Any other prayer requests? Any others? Are there any others? I have to go through this uh, WebEx meeting every Tuesday with my... Um, Wex coordinator colleagues, the uh, work experience coordinators, and the supervisor always, when he gets to the end of his minutes, he always says, are there any others, any others, any other prayer requests? Are there any others? Are there any others? <clears throat> okay, we're going to begin our um, corporate prayer for those who are here and for their families. And um, so 
So we're going to lift up Sylvia Mercado mm -hmm. and her family, Amen. our brother and sister Alan and Maria Lutz and their family from Indiana, mm -hmm. Veronica Castellanos Ramirez and her family in Mexicali. Tade and Miguel Quinal, Israel and Rosie Munoz, and their kiddos, and Josh and Munoz, I know they're all together on vacation. Be safe. Father, we come lifting up all of these families to you. Yes, Father. We ask, Father God, that you would Continue to bless them supernaturally and abundantly as they stand in faith upon your word. Father God, we ask that they would continue to be a light in this world of darkness. Father, we ask that they would continue to be a living testimony. That they would continue to have a desire to pursue you in worship and to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we come lifting up uh, our brothers and sisters in, in the Ukraine yes, that are still uh, dealing with this ongoing war that is being politicized and dragged out. And I know, Father God, I would eventually want to go back to my home and continue to live out my life, Father God. But it is, it is, a, it is just a horrible situation. And that families are scattered all over the planet, uh, the kids. So Father, in, in, this, in this situation, Father, we ask that you would just be with those families. Yes, Father. Those, those men and women that are serving in the armed forces and those men and women that are getting ready to be deployed to go over there from, from many different countries. Lord, we ask that you would go with them and be with them and keep them safe from all harm and all danger. Lord, we lift up also those who are serving as missionaries. Father, we ask that you would continue to be with them as they have made a commitment to share the gospel to whoever would give an ear to hear on every continent and, on, and, on every, and in every country, Lord, in places that some people would only, would, would be afraid to go. You've put it on a heart, you have put, put it on the heart of these folks to go and share the gospel. So keep them safe from all harm yes, and all danger. Lord, we lift up those who are serving as firemen and nurses and doctors that are in the ERs and police officers, Father God, that are serving their local neighborhood, that put themselves in harm's way to save others. Yes, we Lord. ask, Father God, that you would continue to be with them. Lord, we lift up parents right now because the school year is ending and these children are coming home and they will be with their parents all day long. So, Father, we ask that was, this will be a time of restoration, a time of celebration, and a time of strengthening families, to, uh, mm -hmm. giving families an opportunity to do f family things, go to vacation Bible school, go on vacation. <coughs> Lord, it's the, the, uh, the season, the seasons are changing. And Lord, we just lift up these, all of these families to you in Jesus' yes, Father, in name. Jesus name. Thank you. And Father, we lift up the local church, the pastors and lay ministers. We lift up our own pastor, Israel Munoz, and Rosie Munoz, Father God, and the staff at Zion Worship Center. Mm -hmm. We ask, Father God, that you would continue to crown them with wisdom and knowledge and understanding that, that patience endurance would prevail in their hearts and minds. 
Lord, we lift up uh, Melissa and Will Harper and the staff here at yes, uh, Victory Life. Mm -hmm. Lord, we ask that you would continue to be with them and keep them safe from all harm and danger and that your wisdom and knowledge and understanding and the ability to rightly divide the word of God to your people will exist in their hearts and in their minds in Jesus' name. And Lord, we ask that you would continue to give us a heart of worship as we depart from this place, but never from your presence. That that would be first in our mind to worship you in spirit and in truth. That we might be able to hear your voice so that you can lead us, continue to lead us and guide us down the path that you prepared for us. We ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hmm. <sighs> well, what time is it over here? Um, 10 minutes till 10. So I'm exhausted. <laughs> oh. We have a we have a full day and then we do this and but I mean it's a blessing doing this. I love it. It's a it's a refreshing, you know, but my body kind of starts it's starting to get tired by now. <laughs> Ten o'clock. Do you know where your children are? <laughs> oh. <clears throat> well, thank you so much for connecting with us. Um we pray God's blessings over each and every one of you that are um, joining us this evening. We pray that God uses each and every one of you in a mighty way. Um, we love you guys. We're so grateful for you. We thank you that you join us in prayer because once again, we know that there's strength, strength in numbers. And we just wanted to thank you we wanted to tell you that we love you. We wanted to tell you to have a wonderful and blessed week because you deserve it. Mm -hmm. Because you're the children of the Most High. And never think any less when you're walking out the front door into this world. Always remember <coughs> that you are nothing but the best because you are God's child. We love you guys. Have a great evening. But we and don't, don't want to. We don't want to forget to. Anyone's watching doesn't oh. know Jesus. Oh, you know what you forgot today? What you forgot to say? Uh, oh no, never mind. No, oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, so if anyone's out there doesn't know Jesus, yes. we don't want to close our service without giving you opportunity to give your life to Christ. All you got to do is say these words, Lord, God. I know that I'm a sinner and, and I know that I'm not uh, walking in the path that you've laid out for me. So today, I ask Jesus Christ, I believe that he, that he is your son and that you sent him down to this planet to die on an old royal cross for my sins, past, present, future. And today I accept Jesus Christ into my heart and I make him Lord of my life. And I will serve him all the days of my life. My friends, if you accepted that prayer, if you if you prayed that prayer, you have been born again. Into and we the family of God. And we welcome you to the family of God. Amen. And if that's if that was you, we want to hear from you. Direct messages here on our or on Zion Worship Center, Marino Valley, Facebook. Let us know because we have some materials that will help you along with your Christian walk. Come visit us. Our church is located again, as I said earlier, on the corner of Indian and Eucalyptus. Our services are bilingual. They happen at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. Come meet Pastor and Rose, Pastor Israel and Rosie Munoz. They want to get to know you and all of our staff. So, with that, God bless you. Thank bless you so you. much for connecting with us tonight. And thank you, Alan and Maria, for your blessings also. Yes. We appreciate you guys. We love you guys. And always <laughs> remember, my friends, that Jesus, Jesus 
is Lord. Lord.